Hi guys, Celestia here. I wanted to do a video today about the In Search Of uh, story and continue on with it. This one is called The Detective Returns. Please forgive the noise outside. I live on a very noisy street and well, the weather's good so lots of cars are out. So Astrid went to speak to Ember and her parents about her visit with Detective Broussard. Told them about the council, how they had offered both she and Ember a job, and her mother was quite shocked. Her father was kind of indifferent and to be honest, Amber was just curious. Now Paisley hadn't been speaking to her since she had denied uh, meeting with the council. She, Astrid knew she was there because she could sense her, but the fact that she wasn't speaking to her was fine. So her father suggested that he knew that she had kept the card that he had given her, his business card, whatever you want to call it, because he'd seen it at the bar. And her mother said, well, why did you, you know, why did you keep it if you weren't, you know, going to talk to him again? And she said, because. She said, I wanted to know who to complain about if he continued to show up here and try and boss me around. And that kind of made Amber giggle, knowing full well that Astra doesn't like to be bossed around by anyone. She's very headstrong very independent, very determined. So it was decided by the four of them, Astrid reluctantly, but still by the four of them, for her to call the detective again and meet with him and answer the burning questions that everybody has. So that's what she did. She didn't know whether to call his business number, his cell phone number, since this wasn't a police problem, she decided to call his cell phone number. And to her surprise, he picked it up right away. And he said, hello. And she said, is this Detective Broussard? He said, yes, who is this? She said, uh, this is Astrid. Astrid Dubois. He said, oh, Miss Dubois, getting rather frosty in his tone. He says, what can I do for you? She said, I would like to meet with you to discuss our problem or my problem, however you want to put it. He said, you want to talk to me now. She said, or not. She said, I understand your hostility and I probably deserve it. No, I do deserve it, she said. But, she said, I don't like people coming into my family's place of business and try to order me around. He said, well, that's what you thought I was doing. She said, if I thought that's what you were doing. Yes, I thought that's what you were doing. He said, very well, um, I'll be free in a couple of hours. Where would you like to meet? Well, she said, just, just come to the club. She said, we'll go out in the courtyard where it's a little more private and we can talk. He said, very well, I'll see you then. True to his word, practically two hours on the dot, he was there walking into the bar and she still was struck at how handsome he was over six feet tall, dressed very well, light, sandy, brown, wavy hair, beautiful, beautiful blue eyes, just sky blue. And he, if he wasn't a detective, she's sure he could have made it as a model. And she said, uh, come, follow me, please. She said, what? No, oh, no, no, nothing, nothing. 
Nothing. He said, I'm fine. He said, could we, you know, get a couple of drinks, even soft drinks to take out? She says, of course. Of course. She said, what would you like? He said, uh, ginger ale. Be great. Thanks. So she got him. She said, ice? He said, yes. Yes, please. She said, would you like a slice of orange or lemon or lime in it? No, no, no. He said, no, no junk. Just ice, please. I said, okay. So she got herself a, a Pepsi with a slice of lime. And she said, uh, come, come this way, please. So she took him out into the courtyard. And he said, I have to admit that when you called, I was extremely surprised. She said, I bet. She said, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't very nice on our first meeting, and I apologize for that. He said, Mr. Y, he said, it was not my intention to boss you around. He said, and if I came off that way, I am so sorry. She says, okay. He said, so. He said, you have some questions. She said, yes, I have many questions, actually. He said, I will do my very best to answer them. She said, does the council wanting Amber and I with them, does it have anything to do with my grandmother? He said, a little bit. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, a little bit. She says, okay. Um, what exactly would be our role? She said, Ember is quite hesitant as she doesn't really know what it is that you want from us. I said, Ember is hesitant. She said, well, I'm hesitant too, obviously, but I spoke to her and my parents. She said, you, you, he said, you spoke to your parents. Oh. She said, is that a problem? Well, he said, I actually didn't think that, um, no. She said, well, it's either yes or no. He said, well, I just wasn't thinking that you would do that, that's all. She said, if I were to decide to join the council, she said, my parents needed to know that I might not always be available to them. He said, actually, you know what? He said, that makes sense. He said, okay. Now, he said, as far as your role would be. He said, you said your friend Ember was quite a scientist that she enjoyed uh, taking readings and doing, you know, all of the ghost busting things. He said, yes. He said, well, then that would be her position. She would be in one of the people in charge of a group of other people who would be analyzing data. She can go out to the field if she wants to, or she doesn't have to. She can just stay in the in the lab and work her electronic genius there. She said, I see. She said, and my role? He said, your role will be whatever you want it to be. He said, you can continue in the private sector but we would want you to make yourself available if there was ever an urgent council problem with a supernatural. He said, we call them unusuals. Unusuals. She said, yeah. He said, yeah. He said, most of them just look like normal people. He said, except for the vampires, of course. They don't look like normal people. He said, uh, you said that there were no vampires in New Orleans. He said, and as I said to you, not in this part of New Orleans, you're right. He said, but in other parts of New Orleans, he said, there are vampires. He said, now, vampires have their own council as well. 
and they deal with their issues such as blood supplies. Um, they don't normally drink human blood. They get human blood from blood banks and from animals. He said when an animal is slaughtered, he said the drug, uh, the drug, well he said it is a drug for them, he said the blood is gathered, refrigerated, and then distributed. She said, well, that's very interesting. He said, yes, he said, and we get it from blood banks where the blood is not able to be donated into a human, so those containers of blood are given to the vampires. She said, okay. He said, so as I said, your job with the council will be whatever you want it to be. He said, however, he said, I think you should meet with them and hear what, hear what they have to say. She said, I was afraid you were going to say that. Oh, he said, you don't want to meet the council. She said, no, it's not that I don't want to meet the council. She said, I'm just... She says, I'm still extremely skeptical about all of this. She said, my, my parents both knew about the council. And you didn't tell me that my grandmother had been on the council. He said, I thought you knew. Well, there's obviously a lot about my grandmother that I don't know. And didn't know. <laughs> She said, I, I think you're right. She said, I think I, I need to meet with the council and get their perspective on this so that I can make an educated decision. She said, De detective, she said, I'm, he says, Marcel, please. She said, Marcel, he said, yes, that's my name. Oh, she said, Marcel Broussard. That's a very nice name. He said, thank you. He said, may I call you Astrid? She said, yes, of course, that would only be the polite thing to do. He said, well, he said, Astrid, he said, I am actually quite pleased that you did call. He said, I was going to wait a few more days and then I was going to try and get in touch with you again. He said, you have to understand that the council is quite an elitist group. He said, they, they don't take just anyone. He said, but the fact that you terminated the jazz man and there were no injuries to anyone and that you sent him off to where he should be he said the council was extremely impressed by that. I said, uh, he says, do you, does your friend Amber have the readings from that particular meeting with him? She said, oh yes, yes. She says that she's analyzed it and categorized it and whatever else it is that she's iced. She said, I'm not sure what else she's done to it, but yes. She found some very, very interesting things. He said, oh, he said, like what? Well, she captured uh, a voice, which we presume is him, but we're not sure, neither is she. She said, I, Astrid said, I don't really think that he was, he was a major part of that haunting, but he, she said, I don't think he was the only one. He said, really? He said, so it's your, impre your impression, your supposition, your whatever, that there are still spirits there? She said, oh, yes. Yes. I believe that there are several spirits there, but they're not harmful. They're not mean or angry or vicious. I think they just want to be there. They perhaps live there or close to there during their lives and they just feel comfortable there. 
They haven't caused any problems. There have been no problems, as I have checked with the owners, and there have been no problems. They still hear footsteps, they still hear whispers, but nothing sinister at all. He said, do you intend to go and get rid of them? She says, no, the owners, the owners haven't mentioned it. They haven't wanted us to go and get rid of them. So if they're willing to coexist together, then I don't think that it's necessary in my opinion. He said, very well. He said, Mr. Boy, he said, uh, sorry, Astrid. He said, for someone as young as you are, please excuse me. Excuse me. For someone as young as you are, he said, you have a very level head and a very good mind. Well, she said, thank you, Mar Marcel. <laughs> he said, is it hard for you to say my name? She said, well, yes. Yeah. She said, I, I, she said, this is only our second meeting and calling you by your first name seems somehow inappropriate. He said, well, we're not meeting under any kind of legal or anything like that. He said, we're just, sorry. Um, we're just meeting as two people. He said, I don't bite unless I want to. She said, I bet. He said, was that a smile? Eh, maybe. She said, all right, uh, Marcel. He said, look, he said, if you're going to have a problem calling me Marcel, you can just call me detective. Mr. Broussard. Hey, you. I'm not going to call you hey, you. She said, all right. She said, I'm, I'm going to take the information that you shared with me. And I will share it with the appropriate people. And I will let you know when or if we want to take the next step. He said, that's all I can ask. She said, now she said, if you don't want to go back through the club, you can use the side gate if you want. He said, uh, no, he said, I, I might stick around for a drink or two. He said, I'm off duty. She said, okay. She said, well, I'm, I'm going to go and she said, I'm going to talk to Ember and my parents and I'll let you know what we decide. So she gets the family back together again. She tells them everything that he told her. Ember is getting a little more excited. She, of course, is not willing to just drop everything and, you know, join the council without first meeting with them and hearing from them what they want from her. She's being extremely level-headed as Astrid is and extremely cautious because she doesn't know these people. So Astrid and her parents, Ember excuses herself. She has some things she needs to do. So Astrid says to her parents, why didn't you tell me that grandma was a member of the council. Her mother said, uh, that, how did you know she was? Well, she said, I put two and two together and I didn't get six. She said, are you, Astrid says, are you telling me that they want me to fill grandmama's position on the council? She said, well, I wouldn't do it. So yes, I, I believe that's what they want. She said, Mama, you should have told me. She says, I know. She said, so what have you decided to do, dear? She said, I don't know. I'm going to sleep on it. I'm going to talk some more to Ember. And she and I will make a decision as to where we go from here. Her father says, I think that's very wise. Good job. And that's where we're going to leave it.
So the girls were being very cautious about meeting with the council, which, as her father said, I think that's wise. So the next time we get together for uh, one of these uh, one of these get-togethers of ours, one of these videos, maybe Astrid and Amber will have come to a decision. So thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I appreciate it and listening to me babble on. I, again, appreciate it. So remember, until we see each other the next time, never, ever let anyone know your sparkle. And know that I love you all. Mwah! Till next time, guys. Bye.